So in your first week in the job, here's what you're gonna be focused on. I'm gonna show you on the screen. So financials, team, business, and we're gonna explain all this here in a minute, but literally you're gonna write this on a sticky note and take it to work and keep it and keep looking at it every day. But let's say, so the idea is that you got a job, right? So you applied for the job, you went through the interviewing process, you did really well, maybe you've taken my course the night before the accounting interview and you nailed that job, you got the job offer and you're about to begin working there and you wanna make sure that you are gonna leave a, a very good impression, number one, and number two is that you're gonna impress your superiors, right? You wanna make sure you do a good job. So. We're gonna address both of them today. So the first one is leaving a good impression on your first week, right? So the number one mission that you have when you start working anywhere is to make people realize that you're not a crazy person, All right? It's very simple, right? Mission accomplished. Mission number one is that you make people realize you're not a crazy person, you accomplish that, and then you move on to the next mission, right? The next mission is that you make people realize that you're pleasant to work with. You're someone who is gonna listen, you're someone who is not going to talk over them when they speak. You're someone who is going to pause and think before giving an answer because you're giving a really thoughtful answer to what you're being asked or what you're being presented. Okay, so number one, you're not, cra you're not a crazy person. Two, you're pleasant to work with. Okay, so let's get into it. So the, the approach is going to be financials, team, business, meaning that you're going to understand the financial statements. And then two, teams, you're going to understand the, the makeup of the team, what the team does right? What everybody does on a team and then the business, understanding the business itself. And we'll talk about the strategy into getting into each of these uh, three items here in a minute. So for the financials, all right, so the best approach is to get a copy of the financial statements. So if this is a publicly held company, it's pretty easy. You just go to the investor relations page on their website and download a PDF of their financial statements. Um, and we're going to take a balance sheet approach here today. So we're going to look at the balance sheet, an example balance sheet here, and we go through step by step looking at the accounts and then having some questions. What are the questions that you're gonna be asking that are gonna give you the most insight and um, establish your understanding of the business pretty quickly? All right, so we'll grab a copy of the balance sheet and go through the accounts here. And remember, I wanna remind you again to make a sticky note and keep it on your desk on your first week. Financials, teams, business. This is always gonna ground you and bring you back to what's important and what to focus on. Financial statements, teams, and business. Okay, so with the financials, we're looking at the balance sheet. And the first thing that's gonna come up on the balance sheet is gonna be the current assets. And in the cash and cash equivalents, the company has, in this case, $500,000 in cash. So the first question that you're gonna be asking, and this most likely you're gonna be asking this to either your um, first in command, uh, which if, if you have like an assistant controller or uh, someone you're reporting to, the VP of finance or the CFO, is the question on the banking relationships. What are the banking relationships? Where, which banks do we hold the money at? So you wanna understand where we hold the money. Is it Bank of America, JP Morgan Chase? Which banks uh, do we have banking relationships? Because when you ask this question, this is gonna begin conversations into like, hey, like maybe we're not happy with this bank. Maybe we move into a new bank um, or we're not earning enough interest here. So we might as well just park our money somewhere else, right? This is the kind of questions that's gonna come up when you begin to ask, where are we parking our money? Where, which bank are we holding the money at? Okay, so understand the bank relationships. The second thing is to ask the accounting team operationally, how do we reconcile the bank statements? Do we reconcile the bank statements in Excel or do we reconcile them directly in the ERP software? Right, And when you ask this question, the, what's gonna help you here is that the, the team will begin to explain to you the process of reconciling the back statement. So this is more of a process understanding thing, right? You wanna understand the process. So they'll begin to explain to you, okay, we'll grab the bank statements, we can make a copy of it, um, we grab the balance from the ERP software, and we reconcile it in Excel, which is fine, if you do that, it's fine. Uh, but some other teams will do the reconciliations directly in the ERP software, and they'll show you, like here we open up in the ERP, we open up the bank reconcile tab, and we enter in the balance from the PDF uh, bank statement, and we we find the reconciling items, whether it's cash receipt or cash spent, and then begin to reconcile the bank statement. So this is the two questions I'll be asking regarding cash and cash equivalents. Then the next item up is gonna be accounts receivable. So simply for accounts receivable, I'll be asking for an aging of AR, right? So you ask for an aging schedule, and the aging schedule is gonna show you the breakdown of accounts receivable by customer, right? So you're looking at it by customer, you're only looking at it by time period buckets. So maybe 30 days, 30 to 60, 
30 to 90 days and then beyond 90 days. You know, this kind of breakdown is gonna begin, um, number one, you get to know the customers, who are the customers. And number two, you begin to find out the stories about these customers. So for example, by looking at the balances, you'll find that one customer, for example, makes up let's say 30% of the entire AR aging, right? They are aging balance. And so that's gonna get you to know the stories of the customers who are the large customers and who are the slow payer customers and what are the stories behind it. Maybe some customers have issues with their own cash flows and they're paying you slower. So these kind of questions, when you look at the aging and you uh, speak to whoever's in charge of accounts receivable, let's say the accounts receivable clerk or someone in your team, they'll begin to explain to you the stories of these interesting customers and you'll begin to learn about the business that way. So again, the idea from asking these questions is that you're learning about the business, right? You're not um, you know, being an auditor, you're not being a detective here, you're not uh, going after anyone. And it's important to clarify to your team at every stage of these questions is that, is that you're not asking these questions to be negative, you're not asking these questions um, to poke into their job and, and, and uh, make sure they're doing the job correctly. All you're, do all you're doing and you have to say this to them is that you're asking these questions so they can understand the business and then hopefully you can help the team do things a little better right so that's in terms of accounts receivable the next item is going to be inventory so this is a company that sells physical products so it has inventories and you know similar to accounts receivable you'll be asking for the aging schedule when you ask for the aging schedule you'll begin to see you know the, the stories again similar to the customer aging with the inventory aging that's going to give you some stories about what the company is making so you will begin to see the large balances on the aging schedule you realize that this large item or large SKU is maybe the most important or the highest um, in demand of all of the SKUs and you'll, be, you'll begin understanding what the company sells and what is selling and what is not selling, right? The second thing you'll see on the aging schedule is gonna be what is slow moving and what is fast moving. So an aging schedule of inventory is gonna show you uh, the dates of the production and then how long it's been sitting in the warehouse, right? And that's gonna give you an idea into what is um, high in demand and what is slow moving and potentially understanding this will help you now down the line in establishing whether you need to book a reserve again it's in sl any slow moving inventory items right so this is really good you're not really at this point you're not you know even taking notes or anything you're just really understanding the business all you need to do is to be listening and understanding and asking questions and understand the business if you want to take notes fine no problem but just understand it more than you're not really documenting anything at this stage you're just really understanding the business right and in terms of inventory it's also important to understand the warehouse locations right so when you look at the inventory you can ask about a uh, breakdown of inventory by warehouse and this is gonna get you know help you understand where do we keep our inventory right it's really important for you as a controller to understand where is the inventory being held at okay so this is for inventory we'll go down the list we'll find um, more longer term assets, which is property, plant and equipment. Uh, for this one, asking for a listing is gonna be helpful. Um, also asking, you know, what equipment, what do we use the equipment for? Again, you'll be just listening to stories and understand, you know, which machinery is used for what. Um, and, um, you know, that's gonna prompt some other things also similar to uh, inventory, what is like aging. Maybe some of these machines are up for impairment and maybe you need to understand that at some point you're gonna have to book some sort of a write-off or write-down of this equipment. So looking at a listing of this equipment is really helpful. As you go down the balance sheet, you look at liabilities and you look at accounts payable. Again, similar to accounts receivable, ask for an aging schedule. And when you look at it, you'll understand the breakdown by supplier, right? And then we'll, that will help you understand who are the major suppliers of the business. Right, and then the second important thing that's going to come out of it is um, you will understand the strategy of the business and paying these suppliers. Right, so the business usually will manage its cash flow so that it's paying its suppliers slower than it's getting paid from its customers. Right, so you want to collect faster from your customers, and this is a concept we explain in the balance sheet KPIs on the online course that I teach. I'll leave a link down below. Is that your DSO? You always want to measure your DSO, which is days sales outstanding, and measure your DPO, days payable outstanding to make sure that the number of days to collect is less than the number of days to pay so that you're managing your cash flow effectively. 
Okay, this is for accounts payable. The next thing is gonna be uh, deferred revenue. So when you look at deferred revenue, this is a liability. This is um, something that's gonna turn into revenue in the future. This is the definition of deferred revenue or unearned revenue. So deferred revenue is cash most of the time you receive from customers for a product or service that you will deliver in the future. So the way you, you park it on the balance sheet is as a liability. You book the debit to cash and the credit to deferred revenue as a liability. It sits as a liability until you're able to fulfill and deliver the product in this case right so looking at a listing and a breakdown of deferred revenue uh, will give you an understanding of the breakdown by customer in terms of what you have to deliver in the future to earn that revenue okay then after that you get to non-current liabilities and you'll get to long-term debt we have 3.5 million dollars in this case uh, you want to get a breakdown of that long-term debt and when you look at the breakdown you will that begin will begin the questions and understanding the strategy of the company in paying down this debt and also the strategy for financing in general so that will uh, prompt a conversation usually with somebody who's high ranking like the cfo maybe who's going to be maybe your boss in this case and understanding how does the company finance its operations you know so the three sources of financing are going to be either raising funds which is equity right so you raise equity you sell stock or you borrow money in, in terms of debt right this is number two that's borrow money or you have enough money from your operations which is the best so if you have enough money from your operations this is the best case scenario but if you don't have enough money from your operations to get the business to grow you need to raise funds either from borrowing uh, long-term debt or short-term debt um, or selling stock, or selling equity, selling pieces of the company to investors. Okay, so this is in terms of financials. We looked at the balance sheet. We took this balance sheet approach. It's a really good approach to understand the business and get some questions going. But remember our sticky note. So we said in the sticky note, we have three things, financials, team, and business. Right, so we kind of covered off the financials. Looking at the balance sheet is really good. Um, you don't really have to go to through the PNL. You can go through the PNL for your understanding, uh, but the balance sheet is is uh, important because if you see my other videos, the income statement or the PNL is more of the events of a novel. Right, what goes on like Romeo and Juliet, what goes on during the novel, but the balance sheet here is the ending of the story. Right? So everything goes on in the PL, but then the ending of the story is the balance sheet. And so if you analyze the balance sheet, you get to know the story of the whole business, right? This is the ending of the story. Okay, so we looked at the balance sheet, the financials. The second thing on my sticky note that I'm gonna keep a sticky note, I'm gonna take it out and stick it on my desk, right? I'm gonna keep this with me for my first week on the job to make sure I understand what's going on. So the teams, the second uh, po point here is the team is understanding who does what. Right, so the good thing about taking the balance sheet approach here is that in asking questions about cash, in asking questions about AR and inventory and so on and so forth, as we go through this, we're understanding who does what, right? So this is really good. We are accomplishing two things together, understanding the financials and understanding the teams together by going through the balance sheet. Okay, then the, the last thing is understanding the business. So understanding the business is obviously really important. If this is a company that sells a physical product, then speaking to the sales folks is really good, is really helpful, right? So if this company here sells crab cakes, which is a frozen food, speaking to the salespeople is gonna give you a good understanding of the business because they deal with the customers, they know how to sell to the customers, and so they know the story, how to tell the business like a story. So speaking to them is really helpful. If this company is more of a software business, um, or a SaaS or any kind of other uh, service other than product, speaking to the product engineers is really helpful. So speaking to the people who are making the software is really helpful in understanding what we're selling. But also speaking to salespeople, even for a SaaS company or, or a software company, uh, speaking to the salespeople is really important in understanding the business. So again, focus on three things in your first week, the financials, the team, and the business. Right? and keep this sticky note with you to ground you and remind you every day on what you need to focus on and you'll do an amazing job. If you like this video, give it a big thumbs up. And if you know someone who is starting a new job uh, soon in accounting or in finance in general, uh, share this video with them and I'll see you in the next one.